So today I'll finally be upgrading my editing slash secondary rig to Skylake and instead of building a whole new PC I'm just going to be upgrading it and doing sort of like a vlog commentary for you guys which shouldn't take too long. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming back to you guys today with a video sort of detailing the upgrade process. So essentially what we have here is the X5650 and an X58 motherboard. Now this is a six core 12 threaded CPU, but it is a few years old and I did get sent a review sample of the Z170A. So I decided with that, that I was gonna upgrade to Skylake and I've got the four core i5-6600K, which I'm going to have a lot of fun overclocking because I love trying out new things. However, this being said, we're just going to simply pull out this motherboard, uh, pull out the CPU cooler. Hopefully we can use this CPU cooler with the Z170A and we'll find out today. And then it should be a breeze because all the cabling's already done, the power supply is installed, all the drives are installed. So it's just a matter of pulling out this graphics card and putting in the new motherboard, CPU and all that. So let's get on with it. All right, so we've got the PC all ready to go. This is a fractal defined R4 case. Now, you will want to back up your files just in case anything goes wrong. I always recommend whenever you're doing work where you're unplugging hard drives and stuff like that, always back up your crucial files just in case something goes wrong. In my case, I am reinstalling the OS as well, so I've already backed up my files. Now, it's pretty much just a case of upgrading a PC is unplugging all the necessary things and just putting them aside and then getting out everything. So, uh, I mean, I'll try and make this as quick as possible, so. Okay, there is the motherboard all out. So, that's the first part done. So now we're just gonna take off this cooler off this big motherboard. Now, when I got this cooler, I got it second hand for like $10. So, I'm pretty sure it was missing a mounting bracket, so I had to kind of mount it in with just the stand and just the screw holes coming through the front of the actual case, so. See there, they're pretty long screws, so I figured I could do that and not have any problems. But hopefully, I'm hoping this fits on the Z170A board. And if it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to buy a new cooler that supports our little friend here. Now, if you're reusing the RAM, you'll want to, if you're reusing the RAM, you'll want to obviously take that out and put it on your new motherboard, but I don't really, I've got uh, DDR4 memory, so it's irrelevant to me. But that's the next part. We're going to uh, now try and put this computer on our Z170A motherboard. There's our Arctic Silver 5, still nice and moist. And to clean this off, you just grab yourself an alcohol wipe. You should always have alcohol wipes like readily available wherever you are. <laughs> They're so useful for just anything, you know, like just cleaning anything in general, not just computer parts. So there's our X5650. Booyah. All right, so first things first, we've got the MSI board here and we're gonna put our memory and CPU in. Usually I like to put the CPU in first because 
there's no uh, sort of no blocks or anything like that and it's usually the easiest thing to get in so we've got our uh, 6600 K and now we've kind of got to look for that dot the arrow usually it goes this way usually so if I'm wrong then God help me but no that that fits in perfectly like that and then we just uh, pretty much with the uh, four cores the mainstreams it's usually just one clip with your x99 you've usually got two clips there so uh, that's the first part done, very easy to do, and then we've got our RAM here, which is a good thing. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan, as I've said before, I'm not the biggest fan of the matte look, but the memory we've got here is matte black as well, so it's going to match this motherboard perfectly. So we put that in like that, and now the good thing about this board is I like it. It's got DIMM 2 and 4 there printed there, and it's got first. So that's very easy to understand because it's a dual channel um, supported motherboard you want to put generally you want to have your memory running in dual config and that's what we got so we've got two eight gigabytes of ddr4 memory going in there and now we just want to put on our thermal paste i mean you can do it any way you want it but just for saving time i'm going to use the p method the p okay so we're using some enemax i actually ran out of the um I ran out of the, what you call it, the Arctic Silver 5. I ran out of that stuff, so I'm just gonna put a little blob there and yeah, get the rest of that off because I don't like thermal paste spilling on my motherboard. It's not one of my things. I'm just tighten up that head now. Now this is gonna be difficult because as I said before, this cooler is not the greatest like I pretty much have to mount it from the top and with that I have to kind of it's just hard because you'll see I'm gonna have to mount it from the rear and I don't even know if it'll fit I should have tested this before I put the thermal paste on but um, yeah all right so this is an LGA 775 uh, CPU cooler now it does not fit um, this bracket anyway does not fit with the LGA 1151 or the MSI board. So it does, however, as you can see here, fit diagonally now, which this will be fine for um, sitting up the board horizontally. So the cooler is just sitting on top of it. Uh, however, I probably will be buying a new CPU cooler that fits this properly as for the long term. This is really something I wouldn't recommend. Uh, but in that being said, I'll be able to do my review of this sooner than I expected as I won't have to order a cooler just yet. So as ghetto as it is, this will work. So now there's a closer look. As you can see there, this and another side are just completely not attached as well. So Yeah, the top looks so much better than the bottom. Oh yeah. So let's just put this bad boy back in the case now. That's just what it's all about. Oh yeah, and put the I.O. shield in too. Can't forget the I.O. shield.
I'm the biggest noob. I didn't plug in the SATA cables. <laughs> That's clearly labeled there, so I'll be able to make, we'll do this pretty easy. Okay, so we've got the whole computer running and it's working and uh, MSI just asked me to flash the BIOS before I do anything. So I'm just going to do exactly that. So we've got version 1.4 and we're going to install that on top of this. So uh, it should be okay because it's got a dedicated flash mode. Um, hopefully everything works well. I mean, typically nowadays when you flash a BIOS, it actually loads it into the flash ROM, um, so and then it flashes it, so nothing can go wrong generally, uh, unless your power just shuts out, which is the worst case scenario, and then you will brick your motherboard. But this motherboard has two BIOSes, it has dual BIOS, so there's no problems. It's all good in my hood. Okay, so the BIOS flash has finished, so now we can get on to business, and that is, yeah, just recording. Okay, here we go. Delete run BIOS. Yes, I want to run BIOS. I want to run BIOS. Yeah, okay. So we're booted up in the BIOS now. Everything is running A-OK. -okay. We've got our BIOS, which has been flashed to version 1.14. Now... Interestingly enough, when I did load up the BIOS before, but my camera just bricked out for some reason, I don't know why. Um, it does it very rarely, but I'm going to have to probably reinstall the camera gear. But uh, I had up there 1.16 volt on the vCore. That was on version 1. So I'm guessing the defaults are looking very similar to Haswell and Ivy Bridge on this default. That's 1.1. 1. 1, um, 1. 1 there on the vCore. I'll just go through with you guys. I'm just re-plugging my mouse back in so I can hot plug that and show you exactly what I'm talking about. The vCore here, 1.1 volt. So before that was 1.16 on version 1.1. Uh, now they've changed that. So obviously this is behaving pretty much exactly like Haswell and Ivy Bridge was. So I wouldn't generally, I mean, with that, keeping that in mind, I wouldn't be taking this over 1.3 volt. But uh, regardless, we have, this is the first time I've booted it up and I should technically install Windows before I overclock, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I mean the CPU, like this is the thing. I installed this CPU cooler only on the diagonal. That's only on the diagonal there. So I don't have the two screws in two of the sides of the motherboard. Now, this cooler is so freaking cool at the moment, and it's 34 degrees as well, which is a very good idle considering this room is, what, 23 degrees. So that's not bad at all. So we're just going to try and give it a little, I mean, <laughs> just install Windows on an overclock. I mean, on an unstable overclock. Why not? This is a vlog, and I'm sure this is why you guys love watching the vlogs. So easy, I don't want easy mode, give me advanced. So there we go. This is back to the original. So I thought it was, yeah, overclocking profiles here, but we'll go to settings um, and just check in to make sure all our stuff is good to go. Intel info block effect, I've never seen that before. Um, so yeah, there's all these options here. I'm gonna have to go through them in my own time, but uh, 
Okay, I mean, yeah, it should automatically boot from the SSD anyway, nowadays with all these. Overclock explore mode, okay. Uh, we're going to go all core here and we're going to bump it up just to 4.2 gigs. Um, we'll try it on fixed mode, of course. The ring ratio, we'll try that at, yeah, I mean, 3.9, we'll give that a shot as well. I mean, that seems to be the go-to. Uh, the ring ratio isn't so important. As long as it's 100 megahertz below your, or lower, if you make it the same speed as your CPU ratio, especially on Haswell, then it did cause a little bit of problems. Like it was a little bit worse off than having it lower than your core clock there. I'm just mumbling to myself anyway. CPU base clock, we'll leave that off for now. Uh, the DRAM auto frequency, yeah. I mean, if we've got XMP profiles, we'll just lock them in for now. Uh, no, that's pretty cool too. They've got, if you've got Samsung memory and Hynox memory or Micron memory, you can just like, that's crucial. I think Micron's crucial. You can just lock those. They've got profiles automatically there, which is actually really good. I like that. That, that was a feature on MSI's X99 board as well. So uh, let's try, I mean, we're going to lock in 4.2 gig. I mean, we'll just try 1.22 volt to begin with. I mean, Probably even just up it just to be safe. And I want to see if temps run. I mean, I'm, if I'm installing Windows, I want to go overboard here. Um, VT, I've never seen this. Voltage compensation. Uh, yeah, I probably want to disable that just for now because, I mean, I don't want my voltage going way too high and I don't know what that setting is. Allows most of the advanced overclocking tweaking for CPU Okay, we would want our good old adaptive, yeah, we'll just go straight for adaptive mode. <laughs> or adaptive plus offset. Um, adaptive plus offset's pretty good actually. Uh, we can put that on plus and usually I give it plus 0.5. Um, I don't know, just for some reason my overclocks tend to work really good with adaptive plus offset. Uh, just for 24-7. CPU voltage compensation, we're going to turn those off for now. I mean, the SA voltage, that stuff, we're not overclocking the memory at the moment, so we're just going to leave that. All I want to do is a CPU, and I mean, this is the first run, and I'm, I haven't even tried Skylake yet, so you guys are seeing it as it unfolds. I mean, let's just give this a whirl anyway, so meh. Um, and we've got to, uh, as well, I've got to insert my boot disk, which is going to be... A SD card, so plugged in th <laughs> through a USB. So we've got an SD card plugged in through a USB component here. This is going to either suck or it's going to be good. So we're going to plug it into the front panel. Let's see if this works. Front panel, USB port, boot for me, baby. So we're going to try this and see if it boots from the get-go. Uh, okay, so boot priority, UFEI hard disk, um, 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 um. I'll just try and pull up, I'll just save this anyway, save this as noob overclock, noob OC, there we go, save that. That's a 4.2, and we're just going to go try and boot this bad boy up. Okay. How do I get... I just want to quit, man. Yes. Save configuration and exit. Yes. Save it for me. Okay, so we're going to try and boot now off the USB. Um, we're going to see if uh, this bad boy can walk the walk now so 4.2 gigs straight off the get-go and we are going to try and get into our boot menu I, I don't know I forgot I thought it was f11 on this board when I saw it before hopefully it brings up that yeah f11 to run boot menu cool okay oh man okay UEFI generic SD petition one that looks good. We'll just we'll just boot that. 
see if my uh, SD card can boot Windows. So you might not need a USB after all. This is just a spare memory card I had running around. It looks like it doesn't work. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> please, please work. Yes! Okay, that works. Cool. Right, so now we are, we are now booting Windows, and if it all makes it to the screen, then it should be good. Like, if I can get to loading the files and stuff, then we're in, man. I think we're already done. Like, um, okay. Australia, baby. There we go. Yeah, okay. That sounds good to me. Install now. Okay, this should this should work. I mean, hopefully it works. Okay, I gotta put my product key in, and you guys can't see this. So our Skylake build looks like the 4.2 gigahertz overclock is working, and Windows is installing. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now another th another thing is I don't know if you can see that. I gotta get in there. There's that little yeah you can see it there. I don't know what that is. I've got to check that out. That number's just moving all the time. I think that might be your CPU load. That would be the most logical thing. So that's really cool if that is. That's actually telling you your the load on your CPU in real time. Like that is a really good feature that is useful for an onboard uh, motherboard feature. Like that's actually really cool. Anyway, we'll get back to the install. So like this is the fastest Windows install I've ever seen. So the single core performance on Skylake is actually pretty good. Let's see if my camera can focus properly. It's focus hunting. There we go. Vlogs. You guys say you love the vlogs. You just want to see more of them. You don't care. You just want to see more tech. So <laughs> this is my first time booting this bad boy up. And I'm going to pretty much, I don't know what to do with this. I'm going to sell this, I think. It's the X5650, six cores, 12 threaded CPU. Beast of a CPU. This will go up to 4 gigs, no problems. The CPU will put out a lot of heat, though. I mean, this CPU compared to the 4-core Skylake, man, did the, this big Sys Ninja cooler, this thing was getting pretty warm. I mean, now, touching this thing, it's just... It's cool, man. Like, this 4-core, this is putting out no heat at all. So, yeah. Anyway, that's done. Please unplug the following device. Yes, so our ghetto... Did I show you guys that? Our ghetto, uh, our ghetto, I'm just going to up the ISO there. There's our ghetto uh, Windows boot disk. It's not even a USB boot. It's like an SD card in a USB <laughs> card reader. And that's it. That's all, our, that's all our install is. So let's get, let's drop the ISO down. So there, that's working now. And I don't know what else I have to do. Unplug that and reinstall my computer and we're good to go i mean i've got to install drivers and do all the boring stuff now which i'm sure you guys don't want to see but there's the upgrade process it's really easy this has only taken me like an hour and a bit to install all the hardware mount a cooler that doesn't even properly fit the motherboard and get windows installed so yeah things are going pretty good i'll do an overclocking tutorial for you guys but let's move over to a conclusion now. Yeah. So I thought I just was about finished and everything was working perfectly, but that was not to be the case. There is a problem I'm having a little bit at the moment, and that is with the killer NIC on board this actual motherboard. And I'll show you what I mean. You can see here the device manager. Uh, you know, nothing's happening. But as soon as I plug in the killer NIC, You'll notice that it just starts refreshing like literally every, like literally five seconds. So I just plugged it in then. And you notice the device manager just goes crazy now. It just starts refreshing every few seconds. And that's pretty much what's happening is in my internet browser too. If I go to a download, for instance, and then I refresh that, it'll fail as well. Pretty much in sync with the refreshes in the device manager so it's as if something's cutting out and i gotta pretty much figure that out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in an external nic i've got one lying around and i'm going to see if that fixes the problem 
and then the you know that just means the onboard killer's a bit buggy and I've got to just spend some time diagnosing why that is so see if I unplug the internet like I did just now then it should stop doing those refreshes so yeah so it stopped doing that now so I don't know what's going on there I've got to figure that out it's pretty crazy but yeah it wouldn't be a computer build if there wasn't a problem <laughs> right, so we've installed the killer I mean sorry we've disabled the killer and I see now I've installed an old Broadcom uh, PCI Express NIC. So this is really old. I mean, the driver support's usually in, embedded in Windows and it's recognized that the internet is working. So I'm just gonna try this download again and see if it fails. Yeah, so it's failed again. So now I've got to get back to diagnosing why this is happening. So I don't think it's the killer's fault. I think something else is wrong with this board and I don't know what it is. So I gotta figure it out now. So it's not the NIC, and this is the problem with having problems, is that you've gotta diagnose what's happening. So, I mean, I can pull up device manager. Yeah, oh, man. Why me? That's, I mean, generally when I go with these new builds, I, I had problems the last time as well where I had to update the BIOS. But yeah, you can see there the device manager's flashing again, and I'm guessing that's to do with the same thing. Anyway, I'm going to keep diagnosing and reporting back. All right, guys, so that's it. The problem was fixed by just manually setting the time to the current date and time. The time was actually like set back to 2009, and that must have been causing the error with the internet syncing to the Microsoft server or something. I don't know. I don't know, but it's fixed anyway. So everything's working perfectly now. I just have to benchmark this motherboard and give it a good stress test and overclock my CPU on it because that's sort of part of the motherboard review. And that'll be coming to you guys next. And we've got the new shirts. So I'll, even though they're not ready, I'll get that link and all that store stuff ready because you know, the truth hurts, baby. But uh, if you guys like this vlog, then please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, about today's video then drop a comment in the comment section below and i will get back to you as soon as i can and this pc here yeah so i have to get a new cooler on it one that actually fits properly so if you want to manually install your lga 775 coolers on these 1151 motherboards just keep in mind that they're going to be like a diagonal connection only which is kind of ghetto uh, so you can see here it's, it's facing flat down at the moment just to Make sure everything's okay, but you know, the CPU is running really damn cool. Like it's a world of a difference compared to the X5650, which uses up a lot of power. So I mean, overclocking this four core should be a complete breeze. So even though that TDP rating says 91 watts, I think it puts out less heat than Haswell as well. So I think that rating's just there to make sure that people don't skimp on coolers, that's all. Anyway guys, that's it from me. I will catch you in the MSI Z170A Gaming M5 motherboard, which I've already tested the audio out on my speakers and the bass and the sub bass are good, which is indicative of a good DAC amp combo. So, peace out for now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.